service. In, in um, the branch of the service was the uh, the Lightning Division, 25th Infantry Division. Lightning Division, 25th Infantry of the United States Army? Right, yeah. And we're all over Korea. We used to move so much because I, it was a, a, a artillery branch that I that I was in. Where and did were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Yes. Do you recall the date? The the day I was drafted. Who? Oh, it was uh, oh, 1950. Was Sometimes, yeah. What and, month? And I was, um, oh, I can't remember the, the month. Oh, that's all right. It, it was, um, I think it was November. Either November or March. No, March. It was in March. And then I did my, my uh, service in, um, um, ooh, uh, Fort Dix, <laughs> New Jersey. Fort Dix, New Jersey. Uh, See, your basic it's training? It's a basic, yes, a basic training. Where were you living at the time you were drafted? I was living in one state. Yeah. So then you went to Fort Dix for your, in New Jersey in for New your Jersey. basic training. Do you for, remember how long that for, was? Oh, it was four months. Yeah. And can you recall anything from your basic training, what it was like? Well, <laughs> just like any any other infantry training, you know. I was, you know, I liked it, actually. See, and I, um, they, we had a nice place to stay, and, um, there was, uh, oh, I think it was about 80 in our division, not the, the division, in the squad, I should say, yeah, yeah. Do you recall any of your instructors from basic training? Oh, the names? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't Do remember. Do you recall the any names. incidents from basic training? Anything memorable happened during basic? Uh, no, it's just regular training, you know, getting up in the morning early and and go for miles on the on our walks, you know, and then uh, instructions on the field, you know, rifle and uh, machine guns and all that. Yeah. At that. Basic training, did you specialize in anything? No. Did they just teach you I all was the just, same stuff? Right, right. It's, it's uh, infantry division. Where did you go after Fort Dix? After Fort Dix, we went to um, uh, Fort Devens, Massachusetts, when we had a ship out. And then... Um, How long were you at Fort Devens? Oh, not... Not too long. Did you know at that point that you were going to go over to Korea? No. I knew when I was at Fort um, in Washington, Fort, uh, oh, Jesus, I forgot the name of that fort that I was in there. And that's where we went out to go to Korea. What did you See, do at Fort uh, uh, Devons? For, at Fort Devons, nothing. Just, you know, staying in there for whenever they were going to take us. Okay. Well, we knew that we were going to go in uh, Seattle way. See, it was in Washington. Washington, what was the name of that? Well, if you remember it later, we'll put it in. So uh, from Fort Devons, you went to Seattle, Washington? Yeah. Yeah, and from there, from there we went to Korea, and we knew that we were going to go to Korea. And you knew you were going to be infantry in infantry Korea. Infantry Korea, yes. You were assigned a specific job at that point, you were just yeah. going to be a foot it, soldier. No, and there I was assigned to an artillery. 
I didn't even know it, nothing about artillery, you know? And I was signed to artillery. I figured, well, hey, I gotta learn, you know, whatever there is to learn on the artillery. Did they teach you so, in Seattle? And um, no, no. It, the, uh, when they shipped us in Korea, then we were assigned to uh, the, I was assigned to the artillery. Where, how did you get over? Did you go on uh, a boat? A boat, you remember the name oh, of it? Oh, yeah, that? yeah, boat. What was the name of the boat? Yeah. <laughs> no, at all. And did you go directly to Korea or were you? We, we went directly to Korea. Yeah, Incheon. Incheon? Yeah. And do you remember what it was like when you first got there, what your impression was? It, well, my impression was that it was. What a poor land we had to we had to defend, you know, and it it, it just it, it, my thoughts were that uh, for me, you know, we shouldn't even be here, you know, and plus it was uh, uh, coming to winter time, and I didn't know what it was going to be like, and it was it was awful. Yeah. Were you stationed right there in Incheon? Yeah, yeah. Then we moved around. We went to Panmunjom, and um, let's see where else we went. Panmunjom, and um, where did they teach you how to use the artillery? Well, they didn't, because from there I went to to the. Um, uh, we had three divisions, three, three um, not division, the division was the, uh, the 25th division, and uh, I was assigned to, um, they had A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, and, but I was assigned to, um, uh, what the heck was the, uh, uh, headquarters, anyway, right at the headquarters. And where was headquarters located? And, and then we we were with, with the unit. Uh -huh. See, we were still with the union. So when the union moved, we moved. See, that's it. It was part of the 25th division. And what yeah. was your job at headquarters? My my job at the headquarters was uh, to um, they knew that I that I uh, could make signs and all that, and I was making signs for all the units in there. Yeah. Great. Um, now, so when you arrived, and what was it like on a day-to-day -day basis? Where did you go, and for how long did you stay? So did you, when you were got assigned to headquarters, you didn't do any artillery work then? Uh, no. So did you always stay with that headquarters? I stayed with the headquarters for the rest of my term In to Korea. Korea. Yeah. And yeah. But we we were um, taken, you know, to see the uh, 105s that we had there. Those were artillery units. See, the 105, 155 in there, we know, you know. But I've never participated in there to any anything. Eh? Yeah. So what would you do on a daily basis with the headquarters company? In the headquarters, I I did, you know, the the sign that I needed to do for the the whole the whole unit. And then yeah. when you'd go to a different place. You do more signs with the oh yeah 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 the signs I still had a had to do it you know but uh, we would destroy some of the signs that we made where we were and 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 go to another place and then I was assigned to to do you know whatever yeah you know, the the sergeant would tell me you know whatever I had to do and uh, and do it. Do all the time, and then I helped. I helped also in the PX. See, I helped the guy in the PX to set up 
whatever we had to do. Yeah. Now, did the PX always stay in the same base, or did it move? No, no, we unit? moved with the units. Even the PX? We, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we always moved with the units. Do you remember the order of where you went in Korea? Oh, no. We went, uh, we went south, and then when, uh, when we had the, the push that we had all the way, all the way up to the border, we had to go with them all the time. Whatever our unit were positioned, we had to go with them. We had to follow them. Yeah. Do you remember the years that you were over there? How long were you there? Oh, we were there 14 months I was there. Yeah. Do you remember what, when you arrived? Well, winter and, <laughs> and summer. I was there almost two winters. So winter it, of it 90, was, 1950? 50, yeah. And then the summer and, and the winter of 51. So you were there? Yeah, in 52. The summer of 52 I was there also. See? And then I came over. We were in, um, um, whenever they had the, um, the true start, see, and we could see, we could see the place almost, we would go up the hill and see the place where they're having the, the true start, see, oh up yeah. At the end of the war? Yeah, yeah. Um, did you see any action while you were in Korea? We saw action, all right, oh yes. Do you remember yeah. any battles? Sure, sure, we're... Pork Chop Hill. You were at Pork Chop Hill. I was at Pork Chop Hill. Can yeah, you with the that? with the battery. Yeah, with the battery fighting there. You know, and what was that like? Oh, it was awful for nights and days at at times. You know, getting the project titles. You know, and uh, moving them out of there and putting new. Uh, I I was doing every. Everything in there. Yeah. Do you remember any specific elements from Pork Chop Hill? Do you remember any specific things that happened? Yeah, we used to, we were together with um, a Turkish battalion. See, and I remember the Turks going out at night, you know, and uh, do hand to hand. Fighting, I never saw it, right. but I they, they were telling us, you know, what they're, you know, were involved in there, and that was, and that was the toughest thing that I really remember, and uh, I remember asking some of the guys, some of the Turkish guys, you know, if they took any any prisoners. He said, we do not take prisoners. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, did this Turkish unit stay with your unit for the whole time or just at that? The Turkish unit? Oh, yeah, it stayed for months with us. And then they moved to other region, you know, where they had to go. But uh, we, we were with them. We had, um, uh, we ate with them. And so, oh, yeah, it, we had... Uh, uh, reunion with them, and it, it was... Did they, they speak English? Some of them did, some of them did. But we could understand one another, you know, if... Uh, what other battles were you in with, with your um, unit? Well, you can Fort, remember? Fort Chop Hill, yeah, was one of them, and uh, other battalion, the, when uh, when we went back, they went back all the way to Incheon, and then back again to Panmunjom. And what happened at Panmunjom? That's where the uh, two starts started. See, that's where we, that's where we, where we stopped. See, at one time we went all the way up north. See, almost to North Korea, we were on right in. Uh, in the borders, 
and then we were pushed back, and then the uh, 38 parallel, we, we stopped, and that was it. And the peace talks had started then at Pan Moon John? Pan Moon John, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there to the end, but uh, there were, uh, the peace talks were, were going on for months, yeah. Were there any casualties in your unit? Uh, yes, there were, there were fatalities, yeah. I don't remember who, you know, and was there, but we had fatalities. Was that yeah. usually during battle in, or uh, from guerrilla warfare? Yeah, from night? guerrilla warfare, you know, from, uh, uh, sometimes the Koreans, they would, uh, the Chinese, they, they would go up the hill and they would see our battalion, you know, and they would fire their motors right there, and then we had a we had a hide. They, but um, so then there would be deaths from mortar fire. Yeah. So once you were so you never actually got to be in the artillery unit, um, and you never actually fired the artillery. Ne no. But no. you saw them. I I saw them. Oh sure. I I used to I used to go and visit them. You know in there all the time, see? but never uh, actually fired an howitzer, see, a 105 or 155 that we had. I bet you were glad you got yeah, the I was sign. glad they selected <laughs> me for the headquarters, let's put it that way. I said, Jesus, this is, for me, it's a good spot. See, when I told, you know, they knew that I could make signs and things like that. Oh, the, the sergeant said, we need you in the, uh, in the headquarters. Did you have so the, prior background before you went in the service in making signs? Is that how, how you knew how to do that? Oh, yeah. Were you yeah. a printer or something? In my, yeah, I was making signs right here before, before they drafted me. Oh, as a civilian. So as a civilian. Oh, yeah, so yeah, good. yeah. I was making signs. Uh, when I went to school in uh, in Italy, eh? Oh yeah. Tom, when did you come to the United States from Italy? How old were you? I was 18 years old. You were 18 when you came, and how old were you when you yeah. got drafted? Yeah, I was. Um, where they drafted me? In, I came in '48. See, and they drafted me in um, uh, '50. Uh, 52, you know, 51, see, and uh, I was I was only here two years when they drafted me. Wow. Yeah, and I was 18 years old. I was born in 29, 19 actually, 19, yeah. So you really hadn't been long in this country before you were put to work fighting for that, it. That's right. How did you feel about that? Uh, well, I figured, well, I was I was hoping that I wouldn't be put in in the um, in Korea. See that a lot of people stayed in Japan of our unit that they came out of here and um, at uh, Fort Dix, and some of them went to Europe. See, and I was hoping I'd go back to Europe. And I was telling that I know the language, Italian language, good, so maybe. I would be an interpreter or something like that and take me there. But <laughs> I didn't like how. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember any incidents uh, during combat in Korea? Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember going at the top of the hill. See, oh, I did a little surveying also. See, with the, when they needed it. See, I follow some of these guys and going uphill, you know, and firing the motors. Not me, but whoever. But I was there assisting, see, getting shells and taking them out and all that. And then um, when um, the Chinese would spot us right there at the top of the hill, see, then we had to <laughs> get out of there because we knew we were, we were in danger and come down, take the motors and, and come down and right at the, uh, at the uh, headquarters, yeah. 
Man, I did that many a times. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Well, I had um, the uh, ribbons that we were awarded and all that. I got all that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you some questions about daily life. While you were in Korea, how did you stay in touch with family? Well, writing. Oh, but I used to write at night. I had my my little two-man tent with a buddy of mine from um, from Montana. We still writing to one another. Oh, so we knew each other there. See, and he was in headquarters also. See, did so we were to together all the time. Or did Pardon? you meet him in Korea, or did he go to basic training with you? No, no, I met him in Korea. When you were both assigned to headquarters? Yes. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Ziegler. That's his last name? Yes. Jimmy James Ziegler. He was um, assigned to the uh, uh, place the same time that I did. He arrived the same, and then he picked us up. He, went, he was actually... Um, um, assigned to stay with the other uh, veterans there. He, he, he was staying with officers and things like that. He was in, in general there. But then at night we, we meet again in a two-man tent, him and I. Did you sleep in a two-man tent the entire time you were in Korea? You never had uh, barracks yes. to sleep in? We, we, we slept in a two-man tent for, oh, i say a good, um, good three months. Then I went in a big, bigger tent, see, and slept, slept there with about 12 other people. Yeah. Did you ever have regular barracks or like a regular building to sleep in? No, 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 tent. It was a squad tent. Wasn't that pretty cold if it was winter? Well, it was pretty cold, but we had uh, we had warmers and things like that that we stayed pretty good. On the two men tent, you didn't see. So we we stayed warmer with warmers and for for our hands, and we had good um, blankets. See that uh, we really had from the uh, for, of course from the government, but we. Um, we, we were cold at nights. Oh, it was awful at times. Uh, oh, that, did you ever get to a base where it was a regular American base um, where there were buildings um, for your mess hall and things like that? Oh, the mess hall had tents also. Big tents. I mean, that's what we say. The whole time, the whole, base the whole time that I was in Korea, I'd never been in a big building. Wow. No. Then would you pack up those tents when you moved? Yes. Them all <laughs> up and go oh, to the yes. Place and yes. Put them all up yes. Again? Well, the, the people that were assigned to the unit, you start preparing all that. And we used to go over there, you know, when I didn't go, didn't, they had nothing to do. Well, I, I helped them with the PX and then with the signing and everything, picked up what I had to pick up, and then helped the guys in the um, in the unit to move out. See, like, well, we had orders. Uh, we got to move out within about five hours. Everything was packaged up and everything, and we go. How long would you stay in one place? Ooh, it all depends. You know, if it was. You know, if they had the the uh, orders that they had to move out, I had to move out with them. Would you That's stay that. for days I, I, or weeks in, or months? Uh, you know, towards the, um, in John, we stayed, oh, a good um, two months in one spot, almost. Then out, we used to move sometimes within weeks, set up everything, everything was all set. 
then we stay maybe a week or two, and then out again. Yeah, the roads, the roads were awful. Oh, with the dirt and everything in there, uh, it was unbelievable. And of course, we had the trucks and everything for us to to move with the with the big units. And um, did you get to ride on a truck, or did you have to walk when you moved? Well, sometimes we walked. A lot of times it was not just, you know, uh, a few yards away. We moved for miles. Yeah. So, so we had to pick up everything, put it in the trucks, uh, and hitched up and go. What was the food like? The food, I, I always liked the food. We, we had good, good uh, sergeant over there. They used to make us excellent food. Yes. Yeah. So that would be the mess hall set up in the The mess hall was, was set up. Hot meals? Yes, we had a lot of hot meals. Did you get meals three times a day? Yeah. Yeah. We used to have it in the morning, noon, and night. Yeah, three meals. Yeah. And we had um, good food every time. Yeah. Did you have enough supplies uh, for other things like clothing, blankets, ammunition, weapons? Yes, yes. Did you yes. lack for anything? We, well, of course, we, you know, we, we asked if we needed, you know, like socks and shirts and this and that. But we had enough on our duffel bag. See, the, uh, and we, we used to do the laundry and everything. And put um, new things if we needed it, you know, if it were all ripped and things like that, you know, we'd just take it to the, to the place there. Did you have shortages of anything? Shortage of anything? Yeah. No, not that I know, but not for me. Oh. No. I, um... Did you feel any pressure or stress? Well, pressure was always there, you know, that you would uh, want to go back. And I used to write letters to my mother, steady. Uh, every, every week I made sure to write a letter to her. Oh, yeah. And to other girls that I knew and boys. <laughs> sure, I was, only, uh, I was only in the 20s, early 20s. Yeah. That was young. Did you do anything special for good luck? Uh, for good luck? Yeah, you know how some people do things for good luck? And, uh, no, just regular, regular things that uh, we used to, we used to do, but nothing, nothing special. You know how some guys carry a rabbit foot or wear a medal or something like that? No, nothing? no, no, nothing like that. I didn't believe in that. <laughs> how did people entertain themselves? We, we had good, um, good entertainment. We used to go to USO, you know, right there. There was, uh, uh, I saw Marilyn Monroe there. Oh, yeah. And uh, a lot of other. People, I had, I got pictures of me with two girls in the USO show. I was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you saw several USO shows that yes. you were there. Yeah. And they would come right out into the field wherever you were located and put on a show. You put up a show right there. Yeah. Did or or just or just a no, or just a miles away from there. And then See? how would you get there? Uh, by uh, by uh, trucks, yeah. We used to have a lot of lot of moving trucks. Oh yeah, used to get twenty twenty five in a truck or maybe more, and they used to take us in the uh, in the show. Yeah. Is there anything else that you did for entertainment? Um, uh, we used to have um, movies at times, but I used to take. A lot of pictures, as you know. I used to love to take pictures and and go all over to take. But 
they, they want you to take pictures, you know, of the uh, machinery in there, how we were doing that. You were prohibited to do things like that, see? But I would take uh, uh, pictures of buddies in there, you know, that I had, and uh, uh, sometimes playing cards at night when I was in the Big Ten, yeah. By then I knew everybody. <laughs> you did now, did that unit, the entire unit stay together your whole time so that you were with that same group of guys the whole time? Right, right. So you probably had to know each other pretty well before you left yes. Korea. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, I knew plenty of guys in there, you know. And um, I got friendly with a lot of them, you know, it was nice. But my buddy from from Montana, he's Ziggy. We call, used to call him Ziggy. He um, he still writes to him. I write to him, and he writes back. And we we went um, to uh, one of his um, uh, son's wedding. Yeah, he, well, we were invited there, and we went all the way to Billings, Montana. Yeah, uh -huh. Norm and I. Yeah. And he's the only one, you know, now that, you know, we really... Did you have other close friendships while you were in the service? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to, we used to know, well, you know, a lot and of other... And did you stay in touch after the war? A lot of other guys, you know, that I knew, yeah, from, uh, guys from, you know, for other, from other states. And, and then you, you just drift away a little bit when, once you're here. But I stayed with Ziggy, yeah. Right. One one little thing is that when uh, I went in the Big Ten, and there was about twelve of us, and Ziggy came in, you know, and we asked him his name. You know, he said it's Ziggler. He said, I said to him, you know, the, this in this tent, it's all for Italians, you know. What what are you doing in here, uh, uh, German? in here. He said, well, I guess I got to uh, change. So I said, from now on, you're Ziggy Petty. <laughs> 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 he didn't mind, you know. But we used to call him Ziggy. Uh, yeah. Were all the rest of you guys in that tent Italian? Yes. Did you speak English or Italian? No, 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 no. It's spoke English. Oh, well, every now and then, you know, yeah. you, we, we just fooling around and, yeah. you know, telling stories and stuff. Uh, uh, but they were all United States kids. Yeah. 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 Did you have any leave while you were in Korea? Yes. Where did you go? We went to Japan. Oh, for oh, how long? For a long three weeks. Well, we had me and Ziggy had had a ball. <laughs> you went together. And that we went together, and we stayed together. Yeah. So what did you do in Japan? Where did you go? Oh, uh, we, the Guy Joanne, Guy Joanne Hotel in Tokyo. Oh. There was, there was the best hotel there, and all, most of the GIs were sent there. Guy Joanne. Yeah. And what did you do while you were on leave? Oh, we, we, what we, kind uh, of touristy things did you do? We, we went all over Tokyo. We got a couple of the girls, and we went to see the whole city. I bought stuff over there that I sent to my mother, and I got, see this here? Yep. I bought that in Tokyo. Yeah, in China. Yeah, and um, then I sent it home, see, to, to uh, my mother. Yeah, but we, just as soon as we get there, we got the guy Joanne Hotel. See, we get together. The, the, the girls used to come over there. You know, they were Americans are here. <laughs> so we used to go over there. We used to get two of them. And, um, and they used to take us all over Tokyo. I got kimonos and everything Yeah, that I bought. Wow, so you, so you got a first-hand tour. Did you only have one leave while you were in Korea? No, no. No, we had um, three times. 
we went to Japan. So every, every about every about four or five months, you would get a leave. Yeah, and go there. So you always went to the same place in Tokyo when you got your leave? Well, we, we liked to guide your head, so <laughs> we stayed there. We used to go dancing, and there was dancing. The girls used to take us dancing, and um, we just had a ball there. Yeah. And uh, Ziggy oh, almost married one of the girls, one of the Japanese girls. He got so infatuated. Oh, wow. <laughs> hmm. So he would see the same girl every time he went back? No. Oh, this was we just never one find time? the same girls. Oh. Never. We I we go to the um to the downstairs, you know, where we meet and all that. And and I had the name of the girl, one of the girls that I first met there. So they say, Oh she's she's gone. They don't stay in the same spa all the time because they don't like too much relationship, you know, to Yeah. To occur. Where else did you travel while you were in the service? Did you see any other places while you were overseas? Well, I saw um when I went to uh for for uh, Devon's not in the in the, uh, in the um, uh, Washington State. See, I uh, we went all over the place in Washington. We went to Seattle, you know, with with the, with the group all the time, and then from there back to Fort Dix again. Yeah, in home. Oh, did you while you were over in t uh, Japan and Korea? Did you see any other countries overseas? Any other countries? Yeah. No. So it was just no, those two just countries. It, yeah, is either Korea or Japan. That's it. That's all I went. Yeah. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events that happened while you were in the service? Well, we used to, like I said, you know, we used to joke around in the tent, you know, we together when nothing was going on, you know. Did you play pranks on each other? But, uh, yes, yeah. Like what kinds of things would you do? Well, we, we used to, we used to play, um, we used to play, we had one of the friends that I had, he had a, a big, Roulette wheel. We used to play roulette. We used to play cards a lot. See, in there to pass the time, of course. Yeah. So. What did you think of the officers? The officers were really good to us. You know, uh, I shouldn't say this. We had a bad occasion. You know, the, this officer, you know, they came out of OCS, lieutenant. You know, he was, you know, I'm, I'm a lieutenant over here. He, uh, he was, I think he was told, you know, not to be too funny there because, you know, you're in a war zone. You know, you'd be good with those guys, you know. Don't, uh, and one of the lieutenants all of a sudden, you know, was gone. They they told us that he had to be transferred to another unit. I don't know what happened. He went out with the some boys, some some of the soldiers, and he never returned. Never never remember. Never, you know, say what they. What happened and all that? He was in the other unit, so he said he was transferred to. But we didn't quite like him. Let's put it that way. But the rest, it was just they knew they knew that we we were in a war zone, and if it's uh, uh, especially if he was new of the places around there, we knew just about every hill around there, you know, and he didn't know, so, but they were good, you know, he said, take me down, they would have blueprints 
Teresio in the best place to go, and we would. Do you remember the names of any of your officers? Oh, jeez. No, I was never, you know, together with them for so long, you know, to pick up, you know, to remember, to, specific, to remember names. specific names, yeah. What did you think of your fellow soldiers? Uh, I think they were great, every single one of them. That of all the ones that I knew, you know, I can't say that there was one that was no good to me or no good to two other kids in the, in the tent where we were or, you know, during the place where we were shooting and all that. No, never. Never remember. Tom, did you keep a diary or a journal at all while you were in Korea? No, I should have. I, she said, I was hoping that my mother would um, would keep the letters. Did she? That no, she didn't. No, oh, she did. What a shame. Yeah, that's a shame that uh, she didn't. You know, I don't know if it was my brother and sister that discarded him and all that. Of course. You know, I couldn't tell them where we were exactly and all that. that she knew that the, we were having we were having fun and the what um, you know where we we were not in the same place. We we're gonna move and I don't know where I knew, but I, you couldn't write it. Gee, well, was your mail because, censored? Did the officers read your mail before it was sent back home? I wouldn't know that. Because, you know, like in World War II, how they censored the mail so that yeah. you couldn't write the, where you were. I think the, the only time, well, we were told, and if they would catch us, you know, riding home, you know, things that, that they weren't supposed to. See, <laughs> you know, they, we would be in trouble. We could not, we could, should write, you know, I'm doing fine, you know, and I wish I was. You know, yeah. couldn't say, but uh, the meals are great, you know, and, but um, other than that, no telling who we were and all that. Did no. you have any uh, sickness or medical problems while you were overseas? No. Nope. That was lucky, huh? No. Nope. So you were healthy the whole time you were there? Yes, I was. Yeah, nothing. Uh, <clears throat> one of my friends, Got sick because everybody gets sick, like um, getting drunk, something like that. You know, you you come back from from Japan, you know, you you catch a little sickness, you know, and that, and they take you right away. But nothing, nothing really big, you know. Yeah. Now, when did you find out that you were leaving Korea to come back to the United States? Well, they would tell you. They would tell you ahead of time. You know, you got about two weeks maybe to rotate. Rotate, they call it, see? To rotate. And uh, when it comes, be prepared. I said, I'm not prepared now. <laughs> <laughs> be prepared, and you're going to go. And that was it. And it was um, an awful coming back because we came on a troop ship, see? We didn't fly back oh, or go over. over. No, no troop ship over there. And then troop ship back oh. to, from Japan. And uh, we stayed. You went from Korea, you went from Korea to Japan. To Japan, from Japan, yeah. And um, we had a, an awful 10 days. At sea, oh, it was awful. Why? Everybody was seasick. Oh, so couldn't couldn't eat. But I could I could stand the seasickness. I don't get too seasick. Even here now, sometimes we we'll go with Norma. You know, she I would love to go. You know, on a, a trip. You know, with the boats and she gets sick. She gets sick on a on a rowboat. <laughs> but I don't. 
I don't, but I did get seasick, and I, but I wasn't bad. And there was a lot of people that were sick. I remember, I remember two guys almost jumped ship. Because you, oh, you don't know how seasick is. It's, it's, it's really uh, awful, awful, awful sickness. And, and these two guys wanted to, sh wanted to jump overboard to, to get out of the boat. Yes, that's a, that, that's a, 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 a bad it is. Was it because of choppy waves? Yes. Or was there storms? Oh, yeah. The or wave what? was going right over the, yeah. yeah I, thought, I thought we were going to sink. Oh, it was bad. And when, when we, we saw the coastline, oh, my God, everybody, did, did a, we go outside and really enjoy it. it so when you came back to the United States, where did you get assigned? Were you stationed back in Seattle, Washington? We stayed, we stayed in uh, Seattle uh, maybe about two days. Oh. All the, the clothes that we had, we had to throw them away. Why? Uh, uh, because we could transport sickness. Oh. See, from there, that's there. So everything went. And we issue all new clothing. I had a new seat, the well, bag, and and I put all new clothes in it. Not not uh, as much in Seattle, but when we landed at Fort Dix again, we had all the clothes changed and everything. Yeah. So you went from Seattle back to Fort Dix. Back new to Jersey? Fort Dix. Yeah. And how long did you stay at Fort Dix? Not too long. <laughs> long enough to change all your clothes. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, we we shouldn't. We had all all new new clothing and everything that we were issued. We put them on, you know. And I come back. I come back home with just that one piece. That's it. That's all they give you when you come back home. They don't give you a whole duffel bag loaded. The, the, the things that you had over there, now, everything gets burned, I guess. Wow. Now, where did you go from Fort Dix? From Fort Dix, I came home. Oh, I you, told were my, you discharged yeah, from Fort Dix? Yeah, that's, I was discharged there. That was it. Do you remember the date? They, oh, I don't remember the day, actually. They, uh, I was told if I want to re-up, you know, I said, I, I told the, the, the uh, sergeant that interviewed me, you know, I said, matter of fact, take me back to Korea, I won't. <laughs> that was it. No, no, I said, I'll, um, I'll go home and uh, do whatever I got to do home. That's do you it. recall your last day in service? Um, I remember getting in my cousin's car and coming home. Your cousin went That's to New it. Jersey to pick you up? Yes. Yep. And then drove to Connecticut? And then drove to Connecticut. Yep. And that's where we stayed with my brother and sister, actually. But before, before I was called, see, we stayed in Winston. I, went, I lived in Winston with them. And then I was called, and they were there. So you yep. returned to the same place that you had lived place. before? I think, I think maybe my brother was in the car too, that uh, come and get me. What did you do in the days and weeks immediately following your discharge? What did we do? Oh, Jesus. Uh, most of the relatives came over, you know, start talking, and, and they wanted to know what the things that I, that I couldn't write home. They knew that it wasn't that sweet. See, of all the letters that I, that I wrote, you know, and um, there was there was a girl that I was gone with, say in uh, in, in, in Winston over here. Don't put it in there. Well, wait then. <laughs> you better tell me that off camera. Um, so um, uh, this is still recording, so we'll uh, move, so we'll move on. Okay. Did you? What did you do for work after you got out of the service? After I got out of the service, I went to work at the uh, clock shop.
Doing what? To assembling clocks. Yeah, and I worked there. Oh, geez, I worked there a good, um, good year. And I didn't um, quite care piecework, you know. And I said, you're not putting, you know, good work here. You know, everything, everything was put together and, and shipped out. See? So I said, no, I'm not going to stay here. So my cousin used to, uh, used to work at the Hudson Wire. Remember the Hudson Wire? Yes, I do. All right. I worked at the Hudson Wire almost two years. And what did you do I there? was an enameler. And we had asbestos ovens over there. They were all like that. See, all the all the heaters were in back of the victim, and they were all covered up with the asbestos. And the wire was coming in, picked up the enamel, go back in out. And, and I had six of them, and I had to check them all, make sure that the wire would come out right because they used to use it for radios and things like that, the, the wires that I was doing. We were sending things to the government. See, so that everything had to be, had to be good. So, uh, but, it, it, and it was in shifts. I used to work shifts from 8 to 4, 4 to 12, and 12 to 8 in the morning. See? You worked all different shifts? All different shifts, a month at a time. One month, I would be working eight to four, then change with the guy that was with me all the time. Then the guy would come in and come in at four and work until midnight because we couldn't shut up those ovens. It would take a lot to just shut them off and put them back on. It would take one full day. That's how complicated they were. So See? after two years at Hudson Wire, where did you go? Oh, I went to um, MCCO in, in um, Pine Meadow, and I worked there building building uh, what you call um, plastic containers for Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. I was I was building the shells in there. I worked. I had a big machine in there, see, and I was making the shells plastic shells for Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. And I, oh geez, I worked there a good um, five years, if not more. Yeah. And then where'd you go? Then I went to MH Roads in Avon. Yeah. And I was a setup man there. Is that where you retired from? And I retired from there. I worked at the MH Roads for 20, 22 years I was there. And I retired from uh, MH Roads. Did you uh, go on for any further education with the GI Bill? I should have. I was dumb to not to. So you See, didn't take advantage of that? I didn't take advantage. See, I got uh, high school graduation from Italy, see? Oh yeah. And um, when I got over here, <clears throat> my uh, cousin, uh, the girl, she's gone now, uh, was going to, to Gilbert, see? And she was the one that taught me the English language because I, did, I didn't know how to speak English. Nothing. At all when you got here? Nothing when I got here from Italy. I didn't know it. Nothing, and, and, she, and I was hanging around with people that were, you know, Italian kids that would, they, they was here, and she gave me hell. She said, no, I don't want you to do, go with them. I'm going to get you some people that are English talking, they go to school with me, and some girls, and then you, you go with them all the time. That's the only way, you say, that you could learn the language, not the way, you know, getting together with kids. And I did. Within six months, within wow. six so months, she at, taught me how to talk and speak and write. So you Everything. were fluent in English when you went 
overseas to Korea then. Oh, I knew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should have I should have told him that I knew Italian only, and then maybe I would <laughs> I would have gone to Europe because I know Italian fluently and I could speak and write. Yeah. Now, Tom, they say that Korea is the forgotten war because we always hear a lot about World War II, and then there's the whole controversy about the Vietnam War. You were one of the Korean War vets. How do you feel about that? What was your welcome like when you came home? I, I tell you. I was really surprised that we were there, to tell you the truth. But I guess they did so much now, you know, in being so friendly with us, you know, that, um, but when I was there, it was a no-no to me, see. I didn't want to stay there anymore that I had to. Yeah. Did you join any veterans organizations when you came home? Um, no, no. I just came home. I wanna, I wanna forget about the service. Yeah. Have you joined any since then? No. So you're not in any vets organizations now? No. They keep sending me <laughs> <laughs> lots of things over here. Hey, you wanna come over here? You wanna do this? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having, I'm having great life now. You know, and um, thanks to my wife and kids, and I having a ball. I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to change it. I wanna, I wanna die like this. That's it. And I understand. You said you still keep in touch with one of your friends, Ziggy. Ziggy. And you see him on a regular basis. We see him. We see him one another whenever we can. Yeah, they got a. <clears throat> They got a nice place over there, and we went to see one. Of, you know, when his his son got married, they went to see him. They got a nice restaurant. They own a beautiful restaurant over there, and we just had a ball there. Yeah. Now you did say you did re go to some of the reunions. Does your unit have a reunion every year? No, we haven't had a single one. Really? We haven't had a single reunion over here. Nobody organized it. I would have liked to have a, 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 a reunion of, uh, of our unit, see? Yep. But um, never, never had any. Never had reunion of our, you know, the, we used to call the Lightning Division and it's still activating. Oh, yeah. The Lightning Division is a good division. Yeah, Tom, I'm going to take they a went break. to Vietnam, and now I think they went to uh, in Iraq. Tom, we had left off. Um, your unit had no reunions, but then off camera, camera we had discussed a few things. Um, did you see any prisoners being taken while you were in Korea? Uh, I saw a uh, few that they took him back, transported it from the top of the hill and down to the headquarters and then shipped them down. I don't know where they took them. But they were there right on the road They're bringing them over here in our tent. Yeah. And when, where did they send the prisoners? Do you know after they captured them? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wait the, a minute. You Wait a minute. Your mic was unplugged, so um, I'm not sure if that came out. So let me ask you again about, did you see any prisoners on Korea? Yes, I did. Yeah, not too many, but a few. Yeah, they were bringing them down from the top of the hill and bringing them down to the headquarters and, and then ship them out. I, I never uh, know where they also took them. Now you were actually... Since but you we had two Koreans, they were working with us. We, we were used to call them the house boys. And they were South Koreans? And they were South Koreans. And what were they yes. like? And they were very nice, very nice to us. And we were very nice to them, actually, see? So, but they stayed with us as long as I was there. 
So even you, when you went moved from place to place, they saw they would follow us. They would follow us. They would come with us. And what would they do? Things like the laundry. They do everything. Oh. Uh, hello, Lisa. Um, what other experience did you have with the people over there and the South Koreans? And now I know you interacted with the Turks when you were right situated with their battalion. Did you do anything with the South Koreans? Uh, not too much, besides you know the house boys there, but. Uh, we didn't uh, have no contact with them, at least. At and then with the South Korean not, soldiers? Not, uh, no, no. There was, um, we see them, you know, going by sometimes on the road when we, when we were moving, you know, to go from place to place. We see them walking down the road, working on the rice paddy fields, and that's it. But, now, uh, you said that you, uh, were in Seoul when you first got to Korea. What was Seoul like at that time? Uh, like I was telling you, it was it was awful. There was no no good roads. The roads were all dirt, unless that's the ones we were in. See? And uh, they were passable, but uh, nothing that uh, it was really, you know, the big. So, um, Tom, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Well, I, um, I'm kind of neutral on that, you know. If, if there's something that we should be in to, uh, to do something that they did bad, yes, but if we're not, it's no sense getting, you know, young boys get killed. I hate that because I've seen a lot of them, see, and uh, I could have, I could have been one of them, could have been one of them, who could be at the top of the hill, you know, just uh, shooting one of the motors, you know, and we get hit by the motor rounds. I know that they were around here. See? Right. How did your military experience affect your life? Um, well, I learned a lot, I guess, through, um, you know, duty and uh, being nice to people. Well, not that I wasn't, but I mean, it just be a little, a little different, a little more cordial and but as as far as, as big changes no I'm just as nice now <laughs> that I was when I went in and uh, the people that I met were very friendly and especially Ziggy <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't covered in this interview? Are there any other memorable experiences or yeah, incidents that I, you can remember? I think we, we cover most of the thing that they, that I went through and all that. But um, I know that there was a lot more than that. Is there the, anything else that you'd like to add? That, that I, uh, uh, especially with the uh, Turk units. Ooh, those guys were really something. Well, you know, so tell me something the, about the, the Turks. With the big mustache and everything that come over there. I know, I know that they're, they went up there and did damage. But they never tell us. They never tell us that they took prisoners. Yep. Well, I can't say what they what they did for them, but they were tough. They were tough infantry. Yep. Oh yeah. Is there anything else that you can recall? So, I guess that's it. You'll think of stuff once I turn the camera off. What the? <laughs> and for the record, there Tom has a lot of photographs that will be uh, archived with his record. 
Tom, I'd like to thank you for your service and thank you for this interview. And you're welcome for coming here. This is the this is the only thing that I actually had, you know, since I've been out. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm honored to interview you. Yeah.